Hi, I'm Ken Fogel, and welcome to my screencast on how to retrieve a Maven project from GitLab and running it in NetBeans. This screencast is of interest to students of mine this winter 2018, but it can also be of interest to anyone who's doing Java programming for the web. My repositories are public, so anyone can have access to my examples. Okay, let's get started. I use the online Git repository called GitLab. What I like about it is the fact that any member of GitLab may have a private repository. GitHub, still the most widely used of the Git repositories, only permits public repositories. Private repositories either have to be paid for or require a special academic license. As I'm not fond of being technical support for my students, I send them all to GitLab and they can easily set up their private repositories. My repositories, on the other hand, are mostly public on GitLab. And to be able to start the process, we need to uh, retrieve the URL for the project we want to use in this screencast. Here is the URL for the project we wish to load into NetBeans. Notice the URL is HTTPS. There are two ways to access Git repositories. One is with SSH, and here we have it with HTTPS. If you just visit, visit HTTPS GitLab.com Omniprof, you'll see the range of projects that I have up there. We want to load this project, which is a Java Server Faces project that uses the JPA to load data from a database and present it on a web page in a Java Server Faces, uh, Faces table. All I need to do is copy this URL and move back to NetBeans. Here we are at NetBeans. This installation is based on the video on installing and configuring the development environment for my students. So this is how we left it when we tested to ensure that the database worked or that the Glassfish Pyera server worked. Now we're going to select the Project tab. With that selected, on the main menu I select Team, Git, and clone. Now I need to enter the location of the Git repository. Now I've copied that from my slide, so I'm just going to paste it in here. Because my repository is public, it does not require a username and password to retrieve it. Here I have to indicate where I plan to clone it, where I plan to place the project. And as you know, I'm fond of the folder dev on my C drive. And I'm just going to create a, another folder for this project called YouTube. We can see here that the name of the project will be KF Web Standard Project. I say Next. There may be multiple branches depending on the project that you bring down. Generally, it is the master branch which would be considered the production version that you should be looking at. We hit Next. Here we verify the location our project will be placed, the name it will have. We're checking out the master. And don't forget to make sure that Scan for NetBeans projects after clone is checked off. I'll say finish. There'll be a little chugging in the background. Yes, open the project. The way NetBeans works and other systems is to actually run the git command line in the background. Now, the projects come up, but it tells me I'm having problems. The problems are related to the fact that this 
project relies on a number of libraries which have not yet been downloaded to this computer. That's going to be the role of Maven. We're going to solve this not by clicking on Resolve Problems, as you might think. I will close this. Instead, I will open up the project. In the project, I am going to say Build. You'll notice here in the console that all kinds of files are being downloaded. They're all being placed into our Maven repository. If you remember, we configured NetBeans to use cdev.m2 repository as the location. Once all of these have been downloaded, then NetBeans can properly evaluate the project and the error disappears and there we go. The project has now opened and presents itself as a proper Maven project. Now, we have a couple more things to do before we can actually run it and see the tests. The first is to run the database scripts so that the database is in place for the project. In my Maven projects, I place the scripts in the folder labeled Other Test Sources. I'll open it up. I'll open up Source Test Resources, Default Package, and here you will see two SQL scripts. I'll open up the first one, Create Aquarium DB. What you see here is the necessary code to open up or to, excuse me, to create a database. But you know what? I'm looking at this and gee, the font is kind of small. It would be nice if we made the font a little bigger so it's easier to read. I'm going to go to Tools, Options. I'm going to select Fonts and Colors. I'm going to change the font from Monospace 13 to a favorite of mine that's installed on Windows machines called Consolas. And I'm going to pick 18 point so it's easier for me to read. And I'll say OK. I'll make one other change that I do in my courses, completely optional. For comments, which are normally light gray, I place my comments in red so that they stand out to my students. Of course, you're free to leave it or pick any other color. I'll say Apply, OK, and ah, my script now is a little easier to read. This script is based on the best practices for MySQL 5.7. I want to execute this. When we set up MySQL and NetBeans, we had created a MySQL root connection. I'll select that, and now I can run the script. Now I'm ready to run my script. I press Run, and I notice that my execution has happened successfully. This first script creates the database and the user for this database. It's only executed once to install or set up the database on the server. The creation of tables and initial data happens in our second script. I open up Create Fish Table, and here we see the creation of the table and the insertion of data. This sample database contains 100 various types of aquarium fish. With this loaded, again I select my MySQL root, execute, and execute finished. No errors occurred. So now my database is in place. Next, I pop over to Services, and I need to make sure that my database server, not web services, servers, which is Glassfish, is running 
before I execute my code. This is necessary because my project will use Archelian and JUnit testing. Right mouse click and say start. In a few moments, Glassfish should be up and running, or my Pyera version of Glassfish, and I can go back to my project and execute it. There we go. Glassfish is now running. Let's go back to Projects. I can go up to the root of my project, right mouse click. You'll notice there's a Run Maven. I can use this. I can also use Standard Run, but let's go with Run Maven. It's already configured if you've downloaded this project to say KF Web Standard. And away we go. It will begin by deleting any existing files, bringing down anything else it needs from Maven, compiling the code, and then running unit tests. We can see it's doing unit tests right now. Yeah, more stuff is being downloaded. And notice that the build was a success. If we slide up a bit, we didn't see it because it's such a quick little test. Let's find it here. You can see that the test was successful. Now all that's left is to actually run this application on the server. And for this, all we have to do is click on the Run Triangle. And there we go. Here is my fish database presented in a Java server faces table. If you're able to get this running, you're ready to do anything I throw at you in my course. Thanks for watching.